Blender is actually a 3D package that can do many things. Among those things is sculpting. And even though sculpting is not a very complex process in its concept and application, it needs really good tools and software that can handle working with an insane number of polygons to craft intricate details of characters, creatures, animals, and so on. And at the same time, processing all that data fast to allow artists to focus on creative aspects of the project. In this video, we will see what Blender can offer to 3D artists in terms of sculpting, whether they need to work on quick and simple stuff, or they want to use Blender professionally to work on highly detailed 3D models. What Blender can offer to 3D artists when sculpting? Blender is an open source 3D package that can do many things in a production pipeline. It can basically do anything that the other industry standard applications can do in addition to having the ability to sculpt. The developers added some interesting features and sculpting functionality in earlier versions of Blender and that has grown with the addition of great tools such as the Dyntopo sculpting which is a great feature to sculpt creatively with the ability to change resolution depending on whether you want to sculpt on low poly count or sculpt intricate details that need millions of polygons. This is also important in terms of speed and efficiency because it helps get most of the work done before experiencing some slowdowns when you start working on the higher poly count. What that means for an artist is that they can concentrate on getting the ideas down as quickly as possible without thinking too much about technical constraints which can affect the flow of the sculpting process negatively and limit you severely if this is the case. Sculpting does not require a lot of technical knowledge the same way it demands from you having artistic skills. Basically, you need to spend a few minutes to a few hours blocking your 3D model, whether it be a character, a creature, environment element or whatever. Blender is great for this and has good tools to help you just do that. Later, you will start adding details to refine your sculpt so basically it is a gradual process and at the end after a few hours depending on the complexity of the model you will end up with something with millions of polygons but it is not going to be usable in this case because it is going to be too much most of the time. So when you finish the process you will generally need to retopologize the model which is all about decreasing the poly count or recreating the model with a far lower number of polygons to be able to use it in animation, video games or even 3D printing. Blender got you covered when it comes to this point because it has the right tools to do this. Some of the interesting features that we can find in Blender for remeshing and retopology are voxel remeshing and quadriflow, which allows you to do better remeshing and convert your sculpt to a mess that you can use inside projects. If your art is not about creating monsters with hundreds of millions of polygons and you have a computer with a good graphics card, this could totally work for you. Blender does not have an insane amount of sculpting features like other specialized sculpting software such as ZBrush, but almost everything you need to do can be done with it comfortably. You can even sculpt with EV enabled, which is the real-time render engine with PBR materials and real-time lighting. Also you can work with a limited numbers of viewports on different shading modes updating in real-time as you sculpt. Furthermore, you can work with procedurally generated content using Blender's modifier system curves, particles, and simulations. And you have a full feature scene management system with file linking, instances, collections, and so on. In addition to that, you can create a real rigging and animation system to pose your characters inside Blender. Sculpting professionally in the industry. For the time being, as many of you probably know, the industry standard for sculpting is Pixelogic ZBrush, which has been dominating in the field for many years now, because it was always here to help game developers and VFX artists to achieve the results they wanted. Blender, on the other hand, is good as a sculpting tool, and step by step it is finding its way to studios that use it professionally, but it has some shortcomings that are being worked on by the Blender team and probably will not be that big of a deal few years from now. For example, if you want to sculpt extremely high poly models with a lot of subdivision and surface details, Blender probably will not perform the way you want it when this goes to an insane level of details. For example, if you want to work in a professional production on a huge monster with 100 million polygons across multiple unigames, you can't split that into subtools, so you need to separate objects, but still, managing those objects can be slow. 
some of the things that need improvement in Blender to be adopted and used professionally is proper medium support, the ability to do subdivision like ZBrush or something close to it, and more brushes to give artists more artistic freedom. New features of sculpting in Blender Some of the new features that were added in the 2.8 release and the newer versions are Redesigned clay brushes. There were some modifications in the way clay and clay strips work. They introduced hard-coded mapping curve for pressure size and pressure length, which increases the dynamic range of the brushes when using a pen tablet. The clay brush now also analyzes the surface to calculate a maximum and minimum deformation plane to simulate the behavior of filling the surface with clay in a controllable way. Pose brush. The first version of the pose brush was added in 2.81. The brush lets the user pose models simulating an armature deformation. Internally, it is a mix between a max expand operator and a transform tool. In 2.82, the brush was fully rewritten to include inverse kinematics, twist deformation, and the ability to control the smoothness of the weights. Voxel Remesher. When you run it, it recalculates the geometry as a quad manifold mesh. Unlike Dine Topo, this remesh is static, so it does not have any performance penalty. This means that you can now use a much higher resolution when blocking shapes of your sculpts. Sculpt Vertex Colors This is a new vertex paint system created by porting the functionality from the old one. This new vertex paint mode is a lot faster in some operations. It supports all features from the sculpt mode like symmetry, optimized mesh viewport drawing, masks, and do and so on. And of course you can paint and sculpt at the same time. Topology Slide and Relax There was a relax brush in the sculpt branch, but it was using a complex and inefficient algorithm to calculate the deformation. The final version included in 2.82 is much simpler, faster and produces better results. It also includes by default a slide mode, which moves the topology over the mesh in the direction of the stroke. The relax deformation is also available as a mesh filter, which distributes the topology of the model automatically. Mask, Extract, and Slice The two operators were added to create new geometry based on the sculpt mask. Both operators are very similar. They remove the masked or unmasked vertices using vMesh and create a new object from the new mesh. Extracting the mask is a common operation for creating cloth and hair on characters, and slicing can be used to remove unwanted parts when using boolean operations is not practical. Blender compared to other sculpting software. For sculpting when relying on adaptive subdivision, auto retopology, and fluid clay-like feeling with a pen tablet, there is currently nothing like ZBrush. 3D Code and Modbox are dedicated sculpting applications, so they are very good, but they are still not close to ZBrush. But Blender is an all-around application that can do everything, so it will probably not be able to replace ZBrush because it is a dedicated sculpting software that excels at one thing. Generally speaking, dedicated applications that do one particular thing, usually they're better applications. This is why 3D artists over time acquire multiple applications to get the best outcome and fast tools. Another thing is the point releases in Blender, where every few months there is a new release, and we see updates and new features every year. So basically they test the features before it becomes stable and officially integrated and can be used without problems inside Blender. The Blender team are constantly working on providing artists with better sculpting tools by trying to imitate the best software which is ZBrush in this department. Over the years, many features that exist in ZBrush have been added to Blender and sometimes they even have the same name. This is not necessarily a bad thing because it is the fastest way to make Blender experience in sculpting much better. It is not just about the tools. There are actually other skills that you need to learn in order to be able to sculpt great 3D models regardless of the tools you are using. I would say that sculpting organic stuff like characters, animals, or creatures is one of the few things in 3D that will require you to be really talented and also demand from you that you have certain skills under your belt. One of the essential skills that you need to have, or at least have some knowledge about, to be a good sculpting artist is anatomy. You will eventually need to do this as it will manifest itself as you begin to sculpt organic forms. Understanding the names of the bones, their locations, and their form, and to be better on this you can seek training on this subject. 
This is actually the first thing schools teach to their students in sculpting classes because it is extremely important if you want to access the full potential of a sculpting software such as Blender. The more time you put in, the more progress you will see. But the key is to keep your passion going. This will motivate you to spend more time doing it. And don't delay when you get inspired because you will not be able to see progress and become better as a 3D artist when it comes to sculpting. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.